everyone, it's a Sunday night and I've got three options. Get settled and get ready for bed and uh, get ready for the week ahead, the work week ahead. Sit and watch a couple of hours of removing blackheads with tweezers videos. Or I thought I could sit down and shoot a quick video for you uh, to share a few things with you. So if I'm honest with you, I have to say I often get more requests or more questions about products that I hate than products that I actually love. Um, and if you've been around here for a while, you know that I don't actually talk about products that I hate very often, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is because there aren't that many products that I hate. Um, I tend to do my research, and so um, products that I buy, I tend to already kind of know if I'm going to like it or not. Um, and then stuff that I'm sent, well, I usually find at least one or two positives for that product. If I'm reviewing a product, even though I personally might not, might not find that it's perfect for me, because I'm reviewing it for all of you, um, I'm more than likely to say, well, it's not great for me, but this person might like it, and it might be great for this person, blah, 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 blah. So, so it's very, very rare that I absolutely pan something. The second reason is because people tend to get a little funny if you um, really diss a product that they love. They kind of take it a bit personally, and it's never intended like that. And then the third reason is the reason for this video. Um, our opinions change sometimes and it would be really silly for me to go ahead and absolutely pan a product only for a few months later or a year later or something like that to then start recommending it and saying how much I love it. Having said that, this is a video about things that I used to hate and now love. So in this video you're going to see six products that I um, didn't care for very much and there were products that were always really really hyped up and I'm then going to explain to you why I now like it. Alright, let's start off with one of the most hype products I've ever seen. So this is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer and every beauty blogger knows this thing. It's very pricey, it's around the, I want to say $80 mark for this bottle and, uh, and I just didn't understand it. I just didn't get why it was so good. There were many, many cheaper primers that I really um, preferred over this one. So for me, it um, it's not that it didn't make my makeup last longer, but for me it just didn't make it look any better. I didn't lay it down any better than if I was using one of my cheaper products. And now I really do like it, but I think what happened with the first bottle, this is my second bottle, so even though I didn't like it, I bought a second bottle. I did use it all up right down to the bottom and I found that no matter how much I shook the first bottle, it always was had a really weird consistency. So some bits will come out chunky, the rest was really liquidy, um, it was very chalky at times, it was just, there was just variation within the, within the bottle. And the only thing I can think of is the first bottle that I did have, when you looked at it, it didn't look straight. It looked like this bit was almost bent off. So I'm wondering if it wasn't sealed properly. Um, so it looked like almost this part was side, like slightly sideways. So I wonder if air got in it and spoiled it. I'm not sure. Um, because this bottle that I've got here is a lot better. Now it still can get a little bit clumpy down the bottom, but you do need to shake it quite vigorously to disperse the product. Um, but this is a product that I now like. It's not my everyday primer. Um, it's not my favorite primer, but I do very much like it. And if someone says to me, oh, Rosa, I've got really oily skin. What should I use? I would recommend this. The second product that I now love and previously hated is another primer, and it's another super hyped primer. You could not scroll through Instagram about two years without falling over this product. Everybody used the professional. And I purchased a tube and um, I found almost immediately once I started using it that I would get such bad breakouts, particularly around um, the borders of my face. Um, and I kind of put it down to this product and I was like, well, um, all of a sudden I've got all these clogged pores, it must be this. And um, I left it in my drawer for a few months and I didn't bother playing with it again. Uh, and then eventually I had to pick it up and I found that I didn't have a problem with it anymore. So it could be that it was this in combination with something else really broke me out. But this product is no longer a problem for me and it does very, very well at filling in pores and making skin look a little bit more airbrushed underneath your makeup. Um, so I did end up going through that small tube and enjoying it and buying myself a massive big one. The third item I'm going to talk about is a lovely Lux product and having a look at um, all of these products I'm about to mention, all but one are high end. And um, this product in particular isn't so much about the product, but kind of like the family of products. And we're talking about nude lipsticks. Now, if you had of, um, if I had have had a YouTube channel about two years ago, uh, or if you knew me in real life, you would know that bold red, pink, purple lips were my thing. Um, I would never ever wear a nude. I feel like it completely washed me out. Um, I felt like it made me look a lot older than I am, and 
just mainly look really bland and boring yeah so um i never ever wore nudes and people were talking about nudes all the time and uh, particularly in the last couple of years again nudes have become really really popular and i feel like for me um it was just finding the real type of nude for me or the right type of nude for me so for me it's been those kind of um rosy kind of hues so any kind of nude with like a rosy undertone is um where i have found my uh, place and so um nudes i'm wearing this one today this is role play um by mark jacobs and um i feel like i don't know i've just completely changed my mind on this i love nude lipsticks now i wear them almost every day my everyday lip color is somewhere between a nude like this and a mauvey pink and uh i'm enjoying the i'm enjoying the change um i don't feel like i'm washed out anymore i think anything that's a brown undertone or anything that's really um peachy undertone does wash me out but when i go for that rosy undertone i really really enjoy it um this was a product that was sent to me and i guess with um especially high-end products that are sent to you you're always a bit like iffy about not liking it and again for me you just won't see it very often mentioned um and so i was sent a tube of this mascara tried it out wasn't blown away and then at some different points throughout the year i sent another couple of tubes of it and i put them in my giveaway pile so i tend to give um unopened products or even sometimes barely like swatched stuff to friends or colleagues or family members and uh luckily i didn't give these away yet they just didn't happen to make it out the door because i ended up really liking it and it's the um tarte tardis paint mascara now um i still don't think it's the best mascara from tarte i think the lights camera lashes is absolutely phenomenal but i have grown to like this one so the reason why i didn't like this in the first place was this uh wand i feel like it was really spiky and it still is and you really need to be careful not to get too close to your waterline or you will stab yourself in the eye having said that um it's still an issue and you still need to be really careful but i feel like i don't know if maybe it's because the formula has like dried out a little bit or what it is but uh, I'm actually loving this one at the moment. And um, it doesn't give you like the most length, but it does give me a lot of nice volume and it does curl my lashes slightly for me. And for someone with like short straight lashes, that's fantastic. So this is one that I did not like and now I really enjoy it. Um, the fifth product I'm going to talk about is um, something that is so, 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 so hyped on Instagram and YouTube. And that's Morphe. And a little while ago, you will have seen that I did a um, like worth the hype kind of video about Morphe and in particular the 350S palette. And uh, my opinions haven't changed on that one. I think it's a good palette. I don't think it's the be all and end all. I don't think it's the most wonderful palette I've ever used. But something that did surprise me from the brand are the brushes. Now, I picked up a bunch of blending brushes. And this is the um, E30 and E22. And they're just two um blending brushes and i find that i really reach for these over a whole bunch of others if you were to compare them to like a zoeva which i feel like is a really standard size brush um they're quite much longer and i suppose that's really good because it does give you a lot of control now for the price i think the um bristles are quite good again they're not the softest they're not the best brushes but for the price i think they're fantastic i think these are great for people who do go through brushes really quickly or need a lot of brushes on hand um i really have no complaints they haven't shed all that much they wash really well um they're soft enough to blend they're quite dense they're probably some of the most dense um fluffy or blending brushes that i do own and i'm just really happy with them okay the last item that we're going to talk about is a fairly recent purchase and i did review this item up on this youtube channel if you want to see my full review and full thoughts then um, i'll leave a link to this in the description box below but um i didn't hate this product by any means i thought it was a nice product great for a collector great for someone who perhaps doesn't have much makeup in their collection but i did feel like Perhaps it wasn't worth the money. Um, and I'm not sure what happened because then I picked it up a couple of weeks ago and started using it. And I've been using it every single day. So we're talking about the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit. Now, everybody picked this up because it looks so darn beautiful. My concern was that for the price, your ambient powder was going to run out really, really quickly. The strobe powder was a little dark for me. And... Um, the other three shades were just a little bit too subtle. Now, the only way I can kind of explain um, my change of heart is that maybe there's like, maybe you need to get through to the really good product because I feel like the first few times I used it, I was just like, and then when I picked it up this time, like a couple of weeks ago, um, 
it just had so much more color payoff. So the only other reason I can think, if it's not that there's bad product at the surface, the only thing I can think of is perhaps as you dig into the product or as you get through the layers of the product, the marbling changes. So maybe as you get less of the lighting powder and more of the pigmented product, you're going to see more up on your skin. Does that make sense? I'm not sure, but I feel like a little bit of a crazy person. Um, again, I didn't hate this one. I didn't pan it. I just questioned whether or not it was worth the money. And I suppose that's still an issue. Um, but now I'm just really loving this. So we might as well call this video Rosa is a hypocrite because I've gone back on some of my opinions, but I think that's a really natural and normal thing to do with products. Anyway, I have some pimple squeezing YouTube to watch, so I'll leave it here. Um, have a great one. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I will catch you next time. Bye.